This is Jeremiah. He's 30. He's from Western Kenya. He does odd jobs. And he's holding his head in his hands because tragically, just last December, his wife Evelyn died in childbirth. Sadly, there are 350,000 Evelyns who die in childbirth every year. Most of those deaths are preventable. I got into the area of global health initially through the area of bioethics. And I'd like to ask you, what makes it right that Evelyn was 135 times more likely to die in pregnancy and childbirth than my own wife, Heather? What makes that fair? It's not right, and it's not fair. And the problem of women's health and children's health surely is one of the greatest ethical challenges we face today. And it's because of women like Evelyn that we need to do things differently and better in women's health, that we need innovation in women and children's health. This young premature baby in a clinic in Africa is fighting for his life. 3.6 million newborns die within the first month of life. Another 200 million who survive because of infection, because of malnutrition, because of events that happen around birth, never reach their full potential. By the age of two, their brains have already been damaged. And what happens then to that child is they don't learn at school, they don't have as productive a career, and they're locked into poverty. Let me try and put this into some personal perspective in terms, of, uh, in terms of my family. My wife is a doctor, as I've mentioned, and she worked for two decades, 20 years, as a doctor in Canada, never once caring for a woman who died in childbirth or a child who died in infancy. In the last two weeks, She's been doing medical volunteer work in rural Tanzania. And sadly, she's cared for both a woman who died in childbirth and a child who died in infancy. Two decades, two weeks. That's why we need innovation in women and children's health. How can innovation save more lives? And I say more lives because innovation's already saved a lot of lives. When I was born in the year 1960, 20 million children a year died under the age of five. That figure today is eight million. We've made a lot of progress, but we can make more. How can innovation save more lives? That's the question that I want to explore today. If a premature baby, like the one I showed you, is born in New York or in London or in Delhi, they'll end up in an incubator, as you see here, and they'll probably be just fine. This incubator costs up to $20,000. There aren't a lot of $20,000 incubators in rural settings in the developing world. One extremely cool innovation that I'd like to show you is an incubator substitute. This baby warmer is made by a group of young Indian entrepreneurs based in a company called Embrace in Bangalore. And it's used to heat the newborn child, just like an incubator. The newborn goes in here. But the trick, the really cool thing in this innovation, is actually in the back. It's this material which keeps the temperature of 37 degrees for up to six hours. So this is a great example of a technological innovation that can save the lives of children. This mother is providing kangaroo mother care to her baby, to her newborn baby, holding her newborn baby close, keeping the baby warm, it's estimated that kangaroo mother care can save up to 500,000 lives a year. 
uh, in the, in, throughout the world. Kangaroo mother care is not a technology. It's a social innovation. And to have it widespread and used more generally requires further, further social innovation. So more mothers use it. One of the barriers that women face in labor and in childbirth, and one of the reasons they die, is because they can't get medical attention in time when they're in labor. This company in Mumbai, Ambulance 1298, has saved 50,000 lives. And the innovation here is actually in the business model. If the patient being transported is going to a public hospital, they'll be charged a very low price. If they're going to a private hospital, they'll be charged a higher price. And the lower price patient will be cross-subsidized. An example of business innovation, saving the lives of women. This child in northern Tanzania is eight. And he came to this medical clinic with fever. This doctor, who happens to be my wife, Heather, she's playing a role in this uh, story, is testing that child's blood for malaria using a point of care test much like this one. This test illustrates how technological innovation, there's a lot of technology in these tests. Social innovation, this is a completely changed delivery model with the care being brought to the patient's bedside instead of waiting for the test results to come back three days later when it's too late or just treating empirically. And business innovation, there's a company that makes these, can be integrated together to help save lives. It's estimated that this sort of point of care testing can save 100,000 lives a year from malaria alone. But we can actually kick up the level of innovation in the area of point of care diagnostics. What's the difference between this malaria rapid diagnostic test and this USB stick? Well, the difference is that this USB stick, because of standards that we've set, can be put into any computer in the world, in a world of plug and play. One of the things that uh, Heather will tell you is that it really would be much better if she could test this child not only for malaria, but for other things. So imagine that this USB stick is a test for malaria. And this USB stick is a test for whether the malaria is resistant to the drug artemisinin that's used to treat it. And this USB stick, that's been chewed over a little bit by my dogs, is a test for the child's hemoglobin. And this USB stick is a test for dengue fever, which could also be causing fever in this child. And imagine a world where, through innovation, these tests can all be used on the same platform, can all be tested at the same time with that finger prick of blood. That's innovation. Business innovation through setting standards, social innovation, technological innovation. That's the future we want to make. So innovation can be technological. It can be social. It can be business innovation. And ideally, these three can be combined in integrated innovation for integrated solutions, for more lives saved. But ask yourself for a moment, where do these innovations tend to come from? And where can they come from? This is Moses Masazi. He's a professor at Makerere University in Kampala, Uganda. And he's beaming with pride. He's beaming with pride because he's showing you his invention, which is an incinerator for medical waste, like syringes, for instance, for mass immunization campaigns, an incinerator that doesn't require fuel. Now, even though this incinerator meets WHO standards, unfortunately, it has not gone to scale. Because Moses Musazi needs capital, and he needs business mentorship. There are too many stagnant technologies like this incinerator, 
great ideas from southern innovators littering many parts of the developing world. Talent and ideas are global. The only question is whether we use them or waste them. We need to help more southern innovators like Moses Masazi solve their own health problems. Southern innovators solving southern health problems. This girl is one of the very first children in December 2010 to receive a meningitis vaccine in Africa. This is a PATH World Health Organization project that is estimated to save 130,000 lives from meningitis over the next 10 years. But the amazing thing about this vaccine is that it costs less than 50 cents a dose compared to up to $100 a dose for a new meningitis vaccine in the United States. Well, why is that? The answer is in the top right part of this slide. And that's a picture of the Serum Institute of India in Pune, which is the manufacturer of this vaccine. This is a great example of affordable innov innovation with southern innovators solving southern health challenges. This mother is beaming and happy because she's put her beautiful daughter under a bed net to protect her from malaria. Long-lasting insecticide-treated nets are the front line of prevention against malaria. And for each 1,000 nets that are distributed and appropriately used, more than five lives are saved. But where do those bed nets come from? In the top right, you see a picture of an amazing company called A to Z Textile Mills in Arusha, Tanzania. I visited A to Z three times over the past five years. And every time I go, they've added a new football field sized space of manufacturing. A to Z is the largest manufacturer of long lasting insecticide treated nets in Africa. It makes more than 20 million bed nets a year. And, and this is the amazing part, employs 6,000 people. So imagine a world where there are 100 A to Zs across Africa, achieving health gains and creating prosperity and creating jobs. That, ladies and gentlemen, is southern innovation solving southern health challenges. So how can innovation save more lives? It's actually not that complicated. We just need to rebalance our approach. We need to embrace a wider suite of innovation, of types of innovation, and to marry technological, social, and business innovation. And further, compared to the way we do things today, we need to better enable southern innovators to solve southern health, health challenges. Because at the end of the day, that is the way, like in the case of A to Z, to make innovation scalable and sustainable. In closing, I'd like to return to the question of why we need innovation in women and children's health. This was my 50th birthday last August. It was a really joyous time for me and my family, for my wife Heather, my children Aaron and Rebecca. For a moment, what I want you to do is to compare this picture with the picture that Jeremiah and his late wife Evelyn and their children would have. That contrast is not right. It's not fair. And it shouldn't be that way. Because this is a future that every family everywhere in the world wants. This is a picture that every family everywhere in the world deserves. 
It's a picture that every family everywhere in the world should have. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the future we can make with innovation in women and children's health. Thank you very much.